How's it going everybody? Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks for clicking on the Hammerdew Crash Course. Today we are going to be looking at the TID Radio BL1 Baofeng Bluetooth Programmer. Now before you run immediately to the description and take the link to Amazon where you can find this, uh, I've got some warnings and I would probably say most of you, it's probably not for you. Well, let me explain why. As you may or may not know, I have gone through great lengths to try and bring people into the hobby in the most um, painless way possible. And I've made a ton of videos on programming the Baofeng. This isn't a Baofeng, this is the Bluetooth module. But you get what I mean. I've made videos on how Baofengs work, the settings of Baofengs, running them with programming software like Chirp on your laptop, whether it's Windows or Mac. And I have found in general that while yes, there's kind of a a, a, a mountain to cross, a learning curve, if you will, that is the fastest way to program your radio and get up on the air and running as quickly as possible. Now to do that, you generally need a Windows PC is preferred, but you can use Mac, you can use Linux, and you need a programming cable. And again, because I've been through a lot of this pain, I recommend the FTDI chip programming cables. So then you're probably thinking, well, Josh, why don't you like a Bluetooth programming dongle? Wouldn't that be a great way of programming a radio? Well, kind of. It's not the Bluetooth that's the problem here. It's the software, as it always ends up being. The integration of software that connects to this, which is a phone application, either an iPhone or an Android phone, is bad. One, it requires you to provide your email address to even use the application, which doesn't make any sense. And two, it does not pull or query any of the mountains of database data we have on repeaters that exist already in the United States and countries abroad. So while this is very cool technology, and I think if they made some changes to it in the software side of the house, it would be a lot more interesting. The fact that you've got to jump through these hurdles of using this app makes it fairly limited in who it's good for. And I'll talk more about that at the end of the video as I wrap things up, but let's go to the tabletop and I'll show you how this works and how to use it. All right, welcome to the tabletop. We got Odd Master. The Odd Master is the application you need to run. When you download this the first time, it's gonna ask you for your email and do this whole thing. At least that's when I, I got this. I got this thing like six months ago. So it's possible that they changed that. I hope they did, if not, whatever. You turn on the dongle and you turn on the radio. Okay, so green light is on and the radio is on. We're gonna go ahead and connect Bluetooth. It should see it. We're gonna say connect. Very good. It's now connected to the radio kit. We're gonna select UV5R, which I already selected it from a past load. We're gonna select model. And here's where one of the problems comes in is that you, you really don't have that many models available. You have the Baofeng models, you have TID radio models, you have TID radios, you have 10-way, which is another UV5R, and then a Radioddity, which I believe is also a UV5R clone. So these are all like UV5R clones. And then we're gonna read. And you can see it's, it's working, it's, it's doing everything it's supposed to do right now. So we'll let it go ahead and finish a read. I don't think there's that many channels on here, but whatever. And we're gonna hit, there we go. So here is, <laughs> Here's, here's kind of the funky thing. So you go channel by channel and you have to scroll through these. You can't list the channels like you would on your uh, Chirp application. So let's say we wanted to go to function. We can see the function controls for the different, um, different parts on the radio. This is actually the settings. So notice channel A display way, channel B display way. So if I change that to channel and name, there we go. There we go, it's changed. So now when we make that setting change, it's gonna switch over. So let's let's do, receive channel's gonna be one, four, five. Oh, see, hey, look at that. So we gotta go in here, one, four, six, dot, five, two, zero. And it matches it, so at least it does that correctly. We're not gonna mess, we're gonna have high power on. We're gonna leave, okay, get out of there. Okay, that's fine. Name is gonna be simplex two meter and you know I like to say simp and then we're gonna go save okay great so now we, we wrote a channel and we hit write and it takes off and it's doing the right so everything so far 
on this end is working perfectly. The Bluetooth dongle is reading and writing as expected, but this software is, is quite a pain in the butt. And uh, again, it's something that could have been better, but it's just not, and it's, it's highly frustrating. Like there's no way to just query. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. Let's just, let's do test. Great. This whole thing is just a weird app. It says new friends, recommended friends, all this weirdness in an app that's just for programming a radio. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, there's all kinds of things. Hey, look, there's a status from 333 minutes ago. I'm glad the size of the odd master has been reduced by another 3M. Okay, great. So if you wanted to load a repeater, you'd have to open up your web app on your phone if this was the only device you had, and you'd have to read the frequencies for transmit and receive, and then whatever code you needed to use for PL tone or whatnot, and then switch back into the app and, and manually enter it, probably going back and forth a couple of times. It, it's almost like, while yes, this works, because of the integration of the software, you're almost better off just programming this by hand and leaving your phone open on the repeater book and then just doing it that way. This feels like it's kind of a crutch in the way they've got this locked with the software that it's, it's really something that could have been better implemented. And I'm just so bummed out that it's, it's so ham-fisted on the software here that makes it not very effective. So, you know, that, that's kind of a bummer that I, I think is just the reality of this thing. Yeah. So yeah, the, the TID Radio BL1, an actual really good uh, Bluetooth dongle in that it, it does the Bluetooth things that it's supposed to do. It passes the data to the Baofeng to load the memory channels onto the radio. The problem is, is you've got to go channel by channel. There's no way to batch up a ton of channels. There's no way to query repeater book or whatever else you want to use. There's no way to load presets like you can on Chirp. So all of those things, which are just super simple to do on Chirp, you cannot do with this. So you're buying something that I think, and here's, here's who I think this is the, 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 the product for. This is for somebody uh, that may be going on travel or may always have their phone but seldom a laptop on them or maybe you don't really have a laptop at all. And Yeah, sure, that's, that's somebody that could use this because they can just use their phone. And they need to add one or two more channels or delete a channel from a radio that's already programmed. You could definitely sit down and program your entire radio with this device, but you're going to have to have another device or a book that has repeater listings that you then go through and, and manually load with your phone. So convenience of Bluetooth, yes, but a lack of convenience by stripping away the conveniences we already have through applications like Chirp. I hope I said that as simply as possible that, well, yes, you get Bluetooth functionality and capability, you're losing functionality in the form of querying common repeaters, geographic locations of repeaters, and repeater resets on your Baofeng radio that you get when you use software like Chirp. So I still recommend you use the FTDI cable, <laughs> and the link is in the description for the good FTDI cable, and continue to use the free software Chirp, which is available, again, Linux, Mac, and Windows PC. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the TID Radio BL1 in the comments below. Please drop them down there. If you have one, maybe I forgot another use case, or maybe I just didn't think of it. What's your use case for using this uh, dongle? Because again, the dongle is cool. The software, not so much. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. If this was helpful and you think it should be in front of other people, make sure you click that thumbs up. And if this is your first time on the channel, please subscribe. I live stream every Saturday, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and every other Wednesday now that I'm hosting Ham Nation. Okay, seven threes, everybody. See ya.